to become the safest vehicle ever built, the SpaceX Dragon capsule must meet extremely strict technical and safety requirements. Among them, can't help but say the careful selection of suppliers for components that they have not yet produced, especially parachutes that ensure the capsule's safety when returning. However, what if that supplier suddenly goes bankrupt and causes SpaceX to lose its supply source? Yeah, it would not be comfortable when you must take a lot of time to find another buyer and then inspect their products meanwhile you are burned out with a mountain of current tasks. But it will not matter as Elon Musk now has come up with an insane new decision to solve this problem. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. To enable the safe return of astronauts and cargo from space, the SpaceX Dragon capsule cannot lack an important component, the parachute system. It is designed to slow the descent of the spacecraft as it returns to Earth. Those parachutes are SpaceX, purchased from its vendor Pioneer Aerospace. However, at the end of last year, there was news that Pioneer's parent company went bankrupt. Thus, SpaceX quietly acquired parachute vendor Pioneer Aerospace. This is the second known acquisition for SpaceX, which acquired small satellite startup swarm in 2021 for a $524 million mostly stock deal. Pioneer is coming much more cheaply. SpaceX has snapped it up for just $2.2 million, according to a bankruptcy filing by Pioneer's parent company in Florida. So what prompted SpaceX to take over Pioneer? Firstly, it is a no-brainer for the price of just $2.2 million, which is seriously like the cost of half a day of operation at Starbase. Secondly, because the parent company of their drogue parachute supplier for Dragon was going bankrupt, SpaceX needed to guarantee a supply of parachutes. And the easiest way to ensure the business survives is to simply buy it out. In economics, this maneuver of SpaceX is called by the name the supply chain security. Supply chain security is the part of supply chain management that focuses on the risk management of external suppliers, vendors, logistics, and transportation. Its goal is to identify, analyze, and mitigate the risks inherent in working with other organizations as part of a supply chain. In this case, the bankruptcy of SpaceX's supplier is a risk that SpaceX must anticipate when deciding to cooperate with this supplier. Therefore, the merger move is one of many solutions that perhaps Elon Musk's company came up with before. Thirdly, SpaceX needs to be much faster than its competitor in this deal. SpaceX likes integration vertical and so do their competitors. Vertical integration involves the acquisition of a key component of a company's supply chain, either upstream or downstream from its own core competency. Companies pursue vertical integration for a number of reasons, including increased control, reduced costs, or improved margins. A good example of vertical integration is Apple, which keeps controlling the whole manufacturing process. Having used to outsource producing some parts before, the company now manufactures basically everything from chipsets to cases. This allows Apple to offer unique products, hard to counterfeit, keep client loyalty worldwide, and guarantee their products high quality. Last but not least, this way SpaceX can save significant time, effort, and money instead of having to find new suppliers or research to build its own parachute technology. To be honest, it is very difficult to make parachutes that are able to survive the high speeds when the spacecraft lands. Space is hard. But space parachutes are much harder. Abhay Tripathi, Director of Mission Operations at UC Berkeley's Space Sciences Laboratory, said in an interview, It's pretty much among the hardest things, other than a very complex propulsion system to make. Tripathi's career includes a 10-year stint at SpaceX, where he was Director of Dragon Missions and Director of Flight Reliability for the Dragon Capsule, and nearly 10 years at NASA, where he worked as a lead aerospace systems engineer. While SpaceX is famously known for insourcing components, Trapathy said he's been in meetings with CEO Elon Musk who determines when to outsource based on two factors, that the supplier is not a complete incompetent idiot, Trapathy was paraphrasing Musk here, and that SpaceX can trust that the supplier can deliver on schedule. When one or both of those criteria fails is when SpaceX decides to ask the hard question, can we insource this? Can we vertically integrate it into our product line? Trapathy explained. The knowledge and ability to manufacture such small volume, technically sophisticated products, is hard to replicate quickly, certainly not at the timescale SpaceX required when it was certifying Dragon. It's true that SpaceX was heavily involved in the engineering of those drogue chutes, 
but the company ultimately looked outward for manufacturing. It's not a science, it's an art, and it takes lots of testing, Tripathi said. Unless you have the capital to do a long testing campaign and really understand the guts of every little part of your parachute system, the linkages, the gores, the reefing lines, the stringers, unless you have a very dedicated test program, you're not going to understand your own parachutes well enough to know the weak parts of your parachute system. Although difficult to produce and depends on outsourcing, SpaceX is still loyal to the landing method by parachute in a body of water or splash down. Indeed, they have applied that method on the SpaceX Dragon capsule since SpaceX COTS demo flight 1 in 2010. The mechanism of the parachute system is pretty simple. During descent, the parachutes are deployed in two stages. First, two drogue parachutes are deployed to stabilize and slow the capsule. The drogue parachutes are small, pilot chutes that are deployed shortly after the Dragon capsule re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. The drogue chutes are designed to stabilize the spacecraft and reduce its speed from around Mach 2.2 to around Mach 0.8. After the drogue parachutes have stabilized the spacecraft and reduced its speed, the main parachutes are deployed. The four main parachutes are much larger than the drogue chutes and are responsible for slowing the spacecraft down to a safe landing speed. The main parachutes are designed to deploy in pairs, with two parachutes deployed on each side of the spacecraft. Once fully deployed, the main parachutes provide enough drag to slow the spacecraft down to a safe landing speed of around 15 miles per hour. Nevertheless, this method has some advantages and disadvantages. Landing in water helps absorb some of the impact since the properties of water provide more cushion than solid ground. This can reduce the need for an extra braking system within the capsule and provide a safer method of landing for the crew inside. Even though splashdown is generally safe today, there are always risks to this method that engineers must test and design for. The biggest is the possibility of the capsule flooding and sinking while waiting for rescue teams to collect the crew from inside. In addition, it could be a ruinous experience for sensitive experiments such as those designed to study crystal growth and microgravity. Further complicating matters was the fact that the capsule came down in the Pacific Ocean, several hundred kilometers off the coast. This made recovery operations easier for the California-based SpaceX, but as NASA lacked suitable payload processing facilities on the West Coast, returning cargo would need to be transported to Johnson Space Center in Houston, or all the way back to Kennedy Space Center. The prospect of experiments potentially having to endure a cross-country flight before they could be released to scientists made certain research difficult or impossible to accomplish. With a helicopter waiting to take time-sensitive payloads from the recovery ship to the space station processing facility, SpaceX can now deliver experiments to scientists between four and nine hours after splashdown. This is a vast improvement over what was possible previously and arguably the best that can be realistically expected for an offshore operation. But it's still not as fast as the space shuttle that usually lands on a runway. Ultimately, having to pull the spacecraft from the ocean and transporting the human crew members or scientific payloads back to land via helicopter will always take longer than simply landing the vehicle at a designated facility. Since SpaceX is no longer pursuing targeted propulsive landings with their Dragon spacecraft, that means another company will have to step up to meet the challenge of truly rapid payload return. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.